Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa McNamee, a medical doctor with an interest in aerospace medicine. In the following video, I'm going to be asking, what is an analog space mission? I realize that a lot of people have a pretty good idea about what an astronaut's job involves, but they don't necessarily know what an analog space mission is or why they're so important for spaceflight. While very few people actually make it into space, there are amazing opportunities for science and exploration here on Earth as part of analog space missions. To answer the question, what is an analog space mission? We're going to take a look at some of the current analogs that are operating around the world at the moment and speak to some of the analog participants who will explain why analog missions are so important for spaceflight. There are a huge variety of analogue missions taking place right now on Earth, and no two are the same. From the underwater lab Aquarius off the Florida Keys to Concordia Station in Antarctica, each mission runs specific experiments and simulations and comes with its own challenges for the participating crews. What these analogue missions tend to have in common is they tend to involve several analogue astronauts grouped together in a self-contained space and usually in an isolated location. You then have researchers or external staff who are outside of the mission monitoring what's going on inside. So essentially a space analog mission is a field test. It's a great way for scientists to look at items of equipment or procedures that they'd like to try out in space but they can test them here on Earth beforehand to decide if it's worthwhile. It's a great way of conducting experiments, of trying out new kit and also doing simulations of the worst case scenarios that astronauts might face during spaceflight. Simulations are a big part of training in medicine, the military and in exploration. They allow a what if scenario to be tested, usually with an element of risk. It's a good way of training teams to deal with worst case scenarios should they occur in spaceflight. If you arrive to the space station on day one and it's on fire, you don't want to be looking for the fire extinguisher or how to use it. You want to have that information really, really well down before you get there. Analog missions can last from a few days to several months. When astronauts leave Earth for the International Space Station, or ISS, they can expect to be gone for six months or more. Once humans start to travel to Mars and beyond, they may be in space for years. It's important that analogues can reflect this long separation so that support systems for astronauts can be properly designed. So why is all this done on Earth? We have the laboratory on the ISS. Why don't we just do all of this research there? The reason is that space is expensive, really expensive. Right now, it costs nearly $3,000 to send one kilogram of weight to the ISS. This, coupled with the risks that are included in spaceflight, mean that it's just safer to test things here first. Space agencies need to know that a team works well together as a unit before they put them into a high-risk situation. We've all met people through our personal or professional lives who are brilliant, and talented, but who don't function that well with others or who struggle once the pressure is on. This is information that you really need to have about somebody before you send them into space. Can they live together in a confined space for long periods of time? Analogues are a way of examining people's character and their interpersonal style. Does the team work together in harmony or is there conflict that could derail the mission? Having a lot of clever and talented people in space isn't any good if they can't work together. Personality and temperament are as important for astronauts as their qualifications and their other abilities. And this brings us around to high fidelity analogues that involve risk.
it's important that analog space missions have an element of real risk as part of them because the stress that risk and danger put on the human body is really hard to fake. It's important that you train in circumstances that are as close as possible to the real thing so that on the day when the performance is needed, that your mind is clear and you're able to focus on the tasks at hand. It's why the European Space Agency has ESA Caves, an underground multi-day training mission in, you've guessed it, caves. Astronauts learn to work as a team in unfamiliar and potentially dangerous environment while conducting experiments and learning speleology, the study and exploration of caves. NEMO, or NASA Extreme Environment Mission Operations, takes place at the Aquarius Underwater Laboratory in Florida. It's the world's only undersea research station and is where teams of aquanauts can stay for up to three week analog space missions. I asked Mark O'Griefo, an aquanaut who works with NEMO, about the Aquarius undersea habitat. He says the concept is that the astronauts dive down and they live aboard Aquarius for one to two weeks. NEMO is important because it ticks the boxes for an environment-based analogue and a mission-based analogue. After 24 hours, the astronauts become aquanauts. They go into what's called saturation. All of the body's tissues become fully saturated with nitrogen. To come back up from the sea floor then requires a 15 hour decompression. This real delay in accessing external help is really important as part of the analogue. It replicates the delay in spaceflight that astronauts will have if they need to seek medical care during an emergency, as it will take them hours to get back to Earth. I asked Shauna Pandayam, a participant in many analogue space missions, why they're so important for spaceflight. Space is hard, space is expensive, and space is trying to kill us. So what we need to do is to retire risk when it comes to human spaceflight. And we do that by making ourselves as prepared as possible for the spaceflight environment. For many scientists, Antarctica is the ultimate analogue environment for spaceflight. With temperature drops to minus 80 degrees Celsius and an austere, inhospitable landscape, Antarctica has been called White Mars and replicates many of the challenges of spaceflight. A crew at the European Concordia station must be entirely self-sufficient over winter as no outside help or supplies are possible. And that includes no medical evacuation if things go wrong and there's an emergency. As the station is situated at over 3,000 metres of altitude, crew members suffer from chronic hypobaric hypoxia, which is a low level of oxygen to the brain. This is really useful for scientists studying how humans adapt to working and living in this extreme environment. Analogues can't reproduce all of the features of spaceflight, but they're a great training ground for future missions. They allow us to test the people, technologies and procedures needed for space missions. And I hope I've shown through this video that opportunities for getting involved in space exploration might be closer to home than you think.